Hey there. Why haven't you texted me or come see me all year? Have you forgotten about your aunt? Aunt Martha? Why are you texting me all of a sudden? Is something wrong? How could I forget you? Especially after what you did to my family at last year's Christmas party. Oh, give me a break. It's been a long time. And you still have to bring it up? In the end, everything turned out fine. Nothing bad happened, right? If, according to you, fine means letting your dog poop on my bed, body shaming my daughter's appearance so much that she ran up to her room on Christmas Eve, having your niece break my precious dinner set, thinking it was normal when your husband sneaked into a neighbor's house to get their gifts, and then the police showed up and arrested him on Christmas morning, and my husband had to bail him out of the station. Then sure, everything was fine and normal. Not a big deal at all. You are so petty. It's been a year. Look, it wasn't my fault. You didn't close the door of your room so my dog could get in. Besides, it's just an animal. You shouldn't hold a grudge about it forever. And I just want the best for your daughter. Isn't my method very effective? Look at you. Wasn't it? Thanks to my advice, you changed yourself from being a fat, an acne-prone girl to being a beautiful and eligible lady. Oh no, not again. Why do you keep bringing this up? You shouldn't have put out those expensive dishes to show off to my family. My grandson is just a five-year-old kid. He was just playing around and accidentally pulled down the tablecloth. He's at the age of discovery. He can't help it, right? And my husband was just drunk and went to the wrong house. How many times do I have to say this? Would you rather trust outsiders than your relatives? Fine, fine. Just keep those excuses to yourself. So, what do you want? Please hurry up, I still have a meeting. Oh, that's right. That could have waited. You should prioritize your family first. Anyway, when are you going to invite me to join your family trip this Christmas? A little bird told me that your family is not going to have a house party for Christmas this year, but will instead organize a family vacation, right? <laughs> your family must have a lot of money to burn, right? Huh? What are you talking about? We don't have any vacation planned. Where did you hear that rumor? Oh, come on. You're not going to fool me easily. I'm not trying to fool anyone. We don't have any sort of vacation planned. I think you may have misheard or gotten the names mixed up or something. Hey, I'm not so old that I'm hard of hearing. Yesterday, I went to your mom's house to get some vegetables and eggs from her farm, and I overheard your mother talking to you. I remember clearly what she said. It's a pity I can't join your family. I'm going to miss my daughter and grandchild a lot. Just enjoy the trip and have fun. Hmm, well, after that I didn't hear much because your mother's dog kept barking every time it saw me. Ugh, like dog, like owner. What? Aunt Martha, did you go to the farm to get food on your own? How many times has my mother told me that your family has to buy your own food? Ugh, your family is so selfish. I just took some vegetables, some eggs, and a few bottles of milk. There's not much to grumble about. Your mother is my older sister. What's wrong with taking care of her sister? It's not that my mom is selfish. It's just that before you get the things, you should tell her in advance. Do you remember the last time you went to pick up things without consulting my mother? You took the goods that my mother was about to deliver to the supermarket. As a result, my parents had to compensate that person under the contract for shortage. Besides, how long are you going to rely on my mother? Rely on your mother? Don't use such harsh words. Come on, don't bring up old stories again. But I'm sure I heard the words Christmas, travel, and party. So when are you going to call my family? There's no need to keep the surprise a secret anymore. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but we don't have any plans to travel. We're too busy with work and other things. Oh, come on, just tell me. Where's the big vacation this year? I've told you. We're not going on vacation. Can you please stop making up things? I'm quite busy at the moment. If you don't have anything else to say, maybe we can talk later. Hey, you're being disrespectful. Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Don't you know it's not okay to end a conversation without an older person's permission? 
Or do you not want to be related to me because you think my family is poor? No, auntie, that is not what I mean. You keep saying it's not your family traveling. So does your mother have another daughter that I don't know about? It seems like you're not going to tell me no matter what I say, hmm. Well, it's a little hard for me to tell you about something that doesn't exist, don't you think? Auntie, swear to God, my family is not going on a vacation. <laughs> no matter. If you're not going to tell me, I'll just have to find out another way. Oh, and don't forget to prepare enough money for this trip because I will bring my entire family with me. What? Your whole family? You mean just you and your husband, right? Oh, silly, I mean my daughter and son-in-law, my son and daughter-in-law, and my five lovely grandchildren, too. Whoa, whoa, slow down, auntie. Eleven extra people? Are you serious? Yes, and since your parents can't go, there's still some space left, right? It'll be fine if I invite both my parents-in-law to come along. Ooh, and how could we forget Bobo? Even though it's a dog, it's also a member of my family. We can't leave it at home alone, can we? 13 extra people and one dog. Yeah, that's right. The more the merrier. Doesn't your family host Christmas parties every year? So this time it's your family that'll pay for the expenses like usual, right? Well, I don't know why you think our family vacation would include your entire family and even a dog as well. Although it's true that every year my family throws a Christmas party. Even if we do go on a trip, it doesn't have to be with so many people. And my family doesn't have to pay for everyone. Isn't it too much? But <laughs> we're not even planning a vacation, so this conversation is pointless. Look, everybody knows that you and your husband make really good money. You guys will have no problems paying for us as well. Besides, won't you get a special group discount if you don't have to go with such a large number of people? I'm sure you'll save a lot of money. <laughs> I can't believe that would even cross your mind. But, Aunt Martha, there won't be any vacation planned. I'll tell you what. If you tell me when and where you're going, I won't invite my husband's parents or my son and daughter's spouses. It'll just be me, my husband, or five grandchildren, and my dog. Although it will be very tiring to take care of those five kids, so maybe I'll need a babysitter to come along. <sighs> but how can I give you a date or place for a vacation that even doesn't exist? After I'm nice enough to reduce the number of people joining you from 13 to 8, including the dog, you still won't tell me? Oh, fine. You really know how to bargain. Then I leave my dog at home. Are you satisfied now? Auntie, I'm about to have an important meeting with my boss, and I'm swamped with work. So I'll have to stop texting you for now. I'll get back to you later. Look, Eugene, I know you're hiding something from me. You can't just drop hints about a family vacation and not tell me the details. I'm family too, you know. <sighs> Fine. I'll find out a way to know about that vacation. Hey, Eugene! Where's your family? We're standing right in front of NASA. When will your family come here? We've been waiting for two hours. NASA? Wait, your entire family is in Texas now? Why did you go to Texas? And what does it have to do with my family and NASA? Oh, come on. You know what I'm talking about. I found out information about the tourist destination your family is visiting and the date and time of the flight. So I secretly booked a flight to Texas. However, because your family's flight was full, I had to book a flight for 5 a.m. today. It seems no one else wanted to wake up that early, so I managed to have seats for 13 people and Bobo. Oh. Did I mention that my family almost missed the flight because we overslept? You should be grateful that I sacrificed my sleep to join your family vacation. Anyway, we're here in Texas and ready to enjoy the trip. You can't escape from us. Auntie, just hold on a second. <laughs> we also know that your family is planning to visit NASA today, so we've been waiting for you here. Your family must be really wealthy. I asked the ticket counter and they said the spaceship tour costs as low as $35,000 per person. Wow, my grandchildren are thrilled. But why are you so late? My family is exhausted. Or maybe you can transfer the money to me in advance and I can buy the tickets for my family to visit first. Oh, and don't forget to reimburse me for the airfare I paid in advance. Let's see, the airfare is $5,000 per person and the entrance fee is $35,000 multiplied by 14, which adds up to 
$600,000. Yes, you need to give me $600,000 right now. I used up all the money I had and maxed out my credit card to get us all here. I only have $20 left, so we can't even go to a coffee shop to wait for you. Hmm, are you miscalculating? According to my calculations, it should be $560,000, right? Of course I know how to calculate, but I rounded the numbers to make it easier for you to transfer the money. Don't rich people like you prefer odd numbers? But why multiply by 14? Didn't you say there were only 13 people? Hello? What about Bobo? Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. And don't forget to book a hotel room for my family. We won't settle for a cheap hotel. It would be best if it's a resort or at least a five-star hotel. Enough with the talk. Transfer me the money right now. Also, remember to book the hotel for my family. After the tour, we'll need a place to rest and take a shower. We'll see. One, two, three. Yeah, we'll need those six double rooms. It should be seven rooms, but to save you money, I'll accept having my youngest grandchild share a room with me. Oh, <laughs> how kind of me. But why did you think we were flying to Texas? Oh, I did some investigation there. A few weeks ago, I went to your mom's house every day because I knew you would eventually call and talk to her. Even though I asked her multiple times, she refused to speak. So, all I could do was wait until she went to sleep and then sneak a peek at her phone. I didn't find anything in your chat box, but in the chat box between your son and her, I found all the useful information. You did what? The boy seemed incredibly excited to tell his grandmother that his parents were letting him visit NASA today. That's how I found out about your flight time. And where is the NASA space station? In Texas, of course. So I came here to wait for your family. Oh, I must say, I'm quite skilled at critical thinking and analysis. <laughs> Maybe I should consider becoming a detective. <laughs> the boy even texted his grandmother asking if she would go to the airport to see him off. It's all so slick. It's just a trip. No need to make it so complicated. Aunt Martha, can you please stop typing for a moment and listen to me? We're not going on a vacation in Texas. We're actually moving to New York. Huh? What on earth are you talking about? I'm currently on a plane flying to New York. I received a promotion decision during a meeting the other day and I'll be the new director of the company's New York branch. Initially, I had mixed feelings, but thankfully my husband decided to pursue his career in New York as well. Additionally, our children have received scholarships to prestigious schools in the city, so my family made the decision to move here. The, the, there's no way that could happen! So what about you calling your mom the other day and discussing the trip? I called my mother that day to inform her about our plans to move and to invite my parents to join us in New York. However, my mother refused and she didn't want to leave her hometown. Then, what about the text between your son and my sister? He clearly mentioned that you promised him a tour of NASA today. I can't misinterpret that and even took a screenshot of the message. Well, you do realize that my son is only five years old, right? What does that have to do with anything? Was this all some elaborate plan to deceive me? No, you misunderstood. I understand which trip you're referring to. Our family often engages in a weekend activity called Imagination Adventure, where we explore different places and have imaginary experiences. Today, according to our schedule, we're going on an adventure to NASA and we'll be battling aliens. Last week, we explored the pyramids and fought mummies for treasure. It's all part of the fun. Aliens? Mummies? What on earth are you talking about? Are you kidding me? Auntie, as you mentioned before, this is the age of discovery and creativity. So our family created a game called Imagination Adventure to foster family bonding and stimulate the creativity of our young children. Have you seen the animated movie, The Boss Baby? Hey, I'm not here to listen to you ramble about pointless cartoons. Explain to me what's really going on here. Here's what happened. My son texted my mom to share about our weekend's imagination adventure and this time the theme was NASA and aliens. But you misunderstood it and thought we were actually going to visit NASA. What? I can't, I can't believe this. Why would you base your actions solely on a text message from a five-year-old without verifying it with an adult? Rushing halfway across the country and depleting your savings based on such information, 
Don't you think at all before you act? No way. It can't be wrong. But why the hell didn't you mention that you were moving in the first place? I haven't heard a single word about it from anyone. Because I wanted to test if you would go completely overboard once again and come up with some outrageous demands. Remember the last time I moved? You insisted on taking the damn sofa set and a bunch of other stuff, despite me clearly stating that my family still needed them. So this time, I didn't bother informing you. And honestly, I don't think it's my duty to disclose every little detail about my family to you. Then what about all the damn money I spent bringing us here to Texas? What about it, huh? I'm flat broke now. I've got a measly $20 in my pocket and we don't even have a damn place to stay tonight or enough money to grab a damn meal. Since I foolishly believed that you would cover all the expenses, none of us bought a credit card. And now here we are, stranded on the damn streets. It's all your damn fault for hiding from us and making things so miserable. You better take responsibility for us. If you don't have enough money to continue your trip, then why the hell don't you just go back home? Are you too blind to see it? I'm broke. We can't afford to fly back. And not a single person you dragged along with you has a credit card, cash, or any means to get some money. Hey, don't assume that everyone is as damn wealthy as you. When I invited them to come, I explicitly said that all the expenses would be covered by you. If I ask them to pay now, I lose all damn dignity. You better damn well do something for us. We're family, damn it. You can't just abandon us like this. Are you seriously this delusional? Of course I am. We're completely and utterly damn broke. No, what I mean is, are you seriously expecting my family to go on a vacation and foot the bill for everything for you and your guests just because you're my aunt? Isn't that damn obvious? That's what family is supposed to do. When I'm in trouble, you're damn well obligated to help my family, right? Are you really willing to throw away our damn relationship over a few lousy bucks? <laughs> You've got some nerve, Aunt Martha. You think that just because we share some blood, you can take advantage of me and my family? You're completely mistaken if you believe that being family means I have to bail you out of every situation you put yourself in. Family is about mutual support and respect, not exploiting each other for personal gain. How can you say such heartless things, Eugene? We're family. We should stick together and help each other out. Helping each other out doesn't mean I have to bear the burden of your poor decisions and irresponsible actions. You made the choice to book a flight without even confirming the details with me or considering the financial consequences. That's on you, not me. But I trusted you. I thought you would take care of us. How could you let us end up like this? Trust goes both ways, Aunt Martha. You can't just blindly trust someone to take care of all your needs without any communication or agreement. And let's not forget that you invaded my mother's privacy, snooping on her messages and making assumptions based on a conversation with a five-year-old. I did what I had to do to find out the truth. I wanted to be a part of your family's special vacation. Well, you created your own reality based on misinterpretations and assumptions. So what are we supposed to do now? We have no money and nowhere to go. I'm sorry for the situation you're in, but it's not my responsibility to solve it for you. You need to figure out a way to handle your own affairs. Perhaps you can seek assistance from other family members or explore local resources for support? You're heartless, Eugene. I never thought you would turn your back on family like this. It's not about turning my back on family. It's about setting boundaries and not enabling irresponsible behavior. I love my family and I'll be there for them when it truly matters, but I won't allow myself to be taken advantage of. I can't believe this is how you treat your own aunt. This is how I expect to be treated as well with respect and consideration. Family should support each other, but it doesn't mean sacrificing everything for the sake of one person's impulsive decisions. I hope you can understand that. Well, congratulations, Eugene. You've succeeded in pushing away your own family. I hope you're proud of yourself. Don't worry, we'll remember this when you're in need someday. Don't expect any support from us. I won't, Aunt Martha. Goodbye. After that, a thought crossed my mind to reach out to my friends in Texas to help Aunt Martha's family, but a call from my mom completely blew it away. My mom informed me that Aunt Martha had just called her and revealed everything I had done, accusing me of cheating her family. She used harsh words and even scorned my mom. 
blaming her for not raising me properly, and demanded that my mom cover all the expenses so she and her family could continue their trip. I was truly shocked because I never expected Aunt Martha to go this far. It seemed she had crossed a line that shouldn't have been crossed. In response, my mom firmly declared that she would no longer protect Aunt Martha and cut ties with her. Later, I heard that Martha's family had to borrow money from a gangster in order to fly back to their hometown. However, since they couldn't repay the debt, they were forced to sell their house and move to a smaller one on the outskirts of the city. Since then, I haven't heard from them at all. As time went on, I focused on nurturing the positive relationships in my life and creating a harmonious environment for my loved ones. I surrounded myself with understanding and supportive individuals who uplifted and inspired me. Our family flourished in our new home in New York, embracing new opportunities and making cherished memories together. As the years passed, I occasionally wondered how Aunt Martha and her family were faring. I hoped that they had found their own peace and learned valuable lessons from the series of events that had transpired. We created a happy and fulfilling life together, leaving behind the tumultuous chapter that involved Aunt Martha. Life was filled with new beginnings, laughter, and the joy of building beautiful memories with those who genuinely appreciated and supported us.